In this exercise, we're asked to determine whether the following molecules have dipole-dipole interactions, CH3F and CO2. The first thing we need to do is to come up with the correct Lewis structure for each of the molecules. For CH3F, we can see that the central carbon atom is bonded to three hydrogen atoms and also to a fluorine atom, which has three lone pairs of electrons on it. And in the case of CO2, the central carbon atom is double bonded to both of the oxygens, and both oxygens have two lone pairs of electrons on them. Next, we're going to use those Lewis structures to determine the shape of the molecules. Notice that for the CH3F molecule, the central carbon atom has four electron groups or clusters, which leads to the formation of sp3 hybrid orbitals, which are, are 109.5 degrees from one another. In the case of carbon dioxide, there are two electron groups or electron clusters on the central carbon atom, and that leads to the formation of sp hybrid orbitals that are arranged 180 degrees from one another. Next, we're going to use those to determine the shape. I'm going to try to show some three-dimensionality to the CH3F by using dots and wedges. Uh, the, the solid wedge indicates a hydrogen atom that's bonded to carbon that's coming out away from the plane of the paper or the, the computer screen towards you, whereas the dashed line to the carbon indicates a hydrogen atom that is behind the, the plane in which you're looking. So one of those hydrogens is coming out towards you, the other one's going back away. And in the case of carbon dioxide, it's rather boring because it's a linear molecule indicating that all three atoms are arranged in a straight line. And then finally, we analyze to see if there's greater electron density shifted toward one side or the other of the molecule. In the case of CH3F, we know that fluorine has a very high electronegativity and pulls electron density towards itself. So the top of the molecule, as it's drawn here, would develop a partial negative charge because of electron density being pulled toward the fluorine. And because electron density is pulled away from the rest of the molecule, the bottom of the molecule in the vicinity of the hydrogen atoms would develop a partial positive charge. So in the case of the CH3F molecule, it is a polar molecule because of the separation of charge. Electron density distribution is uneven, and therefore it does have dipole-dipole interactions in the liquid state. In the case of carbon dioxide, because the polar carbon-oxygen bonds cancel one another, being directly opposite one another 180 degrees apart, it has no dipole-dipole interactions because it's a nonpolar molecule. In the case of the CH3F molecule, in the liquid state, the, um, di the attraction between the partial positive of one molecule and the partial negative charge of an adjacent molecule gives rise to what are called dipole-dipole interactions. Those are forces of attraction that can affect a lot of the physical properties of those molecules. So a polar molecule will always have dipole-dipole interactions.